Welcome to BoatingTikTok.com. God, it feels good to say this for the first time. Welcome everyone and thanks for watching. So what we're going to be doing today is we've got a question from a fellow boater and this is a popular question, okay? Very popular question. Jeff, really enjoy your videos. Thank you. Appreciate the feedback. Quick question. Uh, I moored at a large marina and I'm going through a lot of zincs. What is the difference between a galvanic isolator and an isolations transformer? And which one would help me the most if my boat is mostly just going marina to marina? Great question. Okay, first of all, uh, galvanic, isolators, galvanic isolators and isolation transformers are devices that we install on the AC side of our boat to protect our boats and the underwater metals from having stray current corrosion. Uh, the least expensive of the two is called a galvanic isolator, strongly suggested uh, item for all boaters, uh, relatively affordable. Uh, US, probably about $300 US, maybe $400, depending on the model that you choose. Easily installable. And what it does is it protects your boats from stray DC currents going over the AC grounding circuit. So when we connect our boats to shore power, if you've got a 120 volt circuit, you're going to have three wires that are in that cable. You're going to have a hot, a neutral, and a ground. And all boats in the marina are effectively all connected together through these shore power cords. And if you want to prevent your boat from having corrosion issues, you install a galvanic isolator on the AC grounding connection. It basically will stop DC currents. So that's the sort of first tier of defense. All right, next, isolation transformers. There's really, honestly, isolation transformers are great. But why does not every single boater have one? Well, there's a few reasons, and they're good. One is weight. Galvanic isolate, not galvanic isolators, but isolation transformers weigh a lot. They weigh 100 pounds, 200 pounds, 250 pounds. These are heavy items. Not all boaters can actually fit something that heavy on their boat. Second, they take a lot of space. Galvanic isolator is maybe something about this, this big. It's tiny. It's not small. An isolation transformer is like over a foot cube, bigger than that. Where are we going to mount an isolation transformer on our boats? The other issue is cost. Isolation transformers can cost 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, depending on the size and the amperage, and it goes from there. Again, way more money than a galvanic isolator. But here's the beauty. An isolation transformer completely isolates one's boats from the shore power connection. Not only does it address reverse polarity, which is something that happens on a lot of our boats, which is a really bad thing, and there's going to be a separate video about reverse polarity, but it also addresses the grounding connection and having straight current corrosion going over the AC grounding connection. So assuming you have a boat that can, and you can afford, and you have the space, and you can allow for the weight of an isolation transformer, you will and you should install an isolation transformer on your boat on the AC side. Now, if you can't, for whatever reason, and there's a lot of good reasons, like I said, then the next tier of defense is a galvanic isolator. Most boats that have a lot of underwater metals will definitely add the factory, like for example, Sea Ray, and a lot of the big builders, even Tierras and North Ovens and Salines, and you name a boat, if it's remotely expensive and it's a power boat, the factory and the engineers of the factory are going to have installed an isolation transform transformer on board to protect your underwater metals. And it makes sense. Big fan, but again, they're expensive, they're heavy, and they're big. So that's the reason why we don't all have one. Great question, and thanks for asking. Thanks for watching this video. Glad to donate my time to make these videos and to share our passion for marine electrical. Help us keep this channel ad-free by donating on PayPal, link below, or also potentially buying some of our merchandise on our store. We hear we've got a hoodie, we've got a hat, and we also have some tumblers and other gear. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.